multi-million rand old age home in Randfontein, west of Johannesburg, which was built 10 years ago, but has not yet received a single patient. We also reported that the centre continues to receive millions of rands in government subsidies and a monthly salary bill despite it not being operational. So for those who may have missed yesterday's interview, let's take a quick look at the story. This is Motlakeng 20 prototype old age home, commissioned by the Gauteng Department of Social Development in 2009. The facility was completed in 2012 and built to accommodate 60 frail and semi-frail elderly people. According to the government records, a total of 27 million rands was used for the construction. Expensive furniture, medical equipment, laundry and kitchen equipment were also procured for this facility. Despite the non-functionality of the building, financial records show that millions have been used to pay salaries since its completion in 2012. Following multiple inquiries from Motlagen community about the opening of the facility, the MEC of Social Development Tandimaya Tulakoza traveled to the area to relaunch the facility in 2019, giving hope to the community and the elderly. But that didn't translate into anything positive. The admin clerk, Obri Mutlawit, was hired with 19 other staff members in August 2019. I'm a resident here, I live with this elder, so I can attest Abokoko. They will do with this place. It's COVID. We've seen how COVID terrorized Abantabatala. We have every resources that we can actually make the living conditions of Abokoko better. But till today, uh, I think now it's a norm that uh, we see what our government is doing. It's a trend of maladministration, fraud, uh, corruption, whistleblowers being killed. But we see what we voted for. But I think with us growing, the more we grow, we see these things, the more we can actually act on them. The facility's financial records show that the amount of 1.9 million rands to 3 million rands is allocated to the facility on annual basis since its inception in 2012 for salaries and caring of patients. Motlaudi reveals that the facility has been receiving renovations annually. It's a yearly thing. Even community members will tell you, every year we see contractors there working. Every year, I'm repeating, every year. Uh, the roof will leak. I don't know if it will leak intentionally 2012 coming till I was employed. If the roof leaks, it kills the ceiling, it kills the furniture, the tile. Those were common renovations that, that happens yearly. In January 2020, LB Botha, owner of Friendship Haven Retirement Village, was appointed as an administrator of the facility and chairperson of the board. She assumed the control of bank accounts and management of the facility and its employees. We undertook in January of 2021 that we will assist um, as administrators. So at that time we said, well, it's a lot of work to be done, but it's paperwork, you know, so we will have it ready by no later than end of March. We can open Mokraking um, Age Home by the beginning of April. We then realized that there was staff that was sitting at Mokraking Age Home doing nothing. And I then drew them into Friendship Haven and the Connie Miller Centre. Now, these staff members are caregivers, mostly. Um, so I said, let me take them there and then at least give them training. So they then started a training process um, so that when they go to Moflucking Old Age Home, they will be in a better position to take care of the residents. Botha tells us why the facility is not fit for human occupation. No paperwork can fix the problems with the building that exists. And no um, residents can enter that building until such a time as all of the requirements for the building has not been met. Simple things, not simple things. Things like you need COCs, a COC for the electricity, a COC for the um, safety and security, a COC for plumbing. There's a, the, the, um, a lot of um, work that needed to be done on the building. Wilfred Pule is a 78-year-old prostate cancer survivor. He lives alone in an RDP house. I haven't had tea since the morning, but my tea is there. Why? What must I do? What must I do? Seven years, cancer. Flat. It has been seven years living with cancer, and I didn't have food to eat. As he calls cup. They should be cooking and taking care of me. Where are the doctors? We don't see them. 
there's nothing happening. The facility's kitchen is currently going through repainting for the amount of 494,000 rands. If was to reach out to the Gauteng Department of Social Development for comment didn't yield any results. For SABC News, I'm Masuli Ralebona in Johannesburg. So as we said yesterday, we would be affording the Gauteng Department of Social Development a right of reply to this particular story. And we join now by the head of department at the Gauteng uh, Social Development Department, uh, Ms. Tembeni Mplongo. Thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live, Ms. Mplongo. Good morning uh, to you and the viewers of SABC. Ms. Mplongo, let's just start uh, by establishing whether the Department of Social Development is aware of what has been happening at uh, the Mutlakeng Prototype 20 Old Age Home and whether the expose that has been done by SABC is something that you were actually au fait with as a department. Let me start by saying that before the story broke, uh, as early as January, the department was uh, already uh, busy with a, a report that would indicate how far we have gone ever since we got the administrator as correctly covered in the story. So the report uh, indicated that there are still few things that need to be addressed and therefore uh, we, 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 we will have some few months in tying down those issues. And I think in the report, uh, in the story, it is covered that currently there are some paintings that are uh, a painting that is still being done and other matters that still need to be done so that uh, the, 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 the facility can get the necessary documentation that it needs. So let me try to establish as far as the Department of Social Development in Gauteng is concerned, what exactly is the problem at the uh, prototype 20 old age home? Let me start by saying that this prototype was implemented by Rand West Municipality. But it is now a challenge that the very municipality that has implemented this project is unable to give us the, the necessary occupancy certificate, which would um, give the right to occupy the, the, the building. Uh, and I must indicate that uh, without that, as a department, we cannot take the risk of bringing in people uh, who would uh, be living there 24 hours without us having those documents. Because uh, as you would know, uh, you need to ensure that the health and safety of beneficiaries is ensured in totality when you occupy the building. So Ms. Mklongo, and that makes perfect sense, that explanation, but why then did you employ people to work at a facility when you did not have the necessary documents that you've just mentioned? As I indicated, um, it, it has always been a um, wish that the, those uh, challenges would be addressed within a very short space of time. However, it, it, it has not yielded the results that the department uh, wanted. Hence, we ended up saying perhaps we need to also get an administrator who is already in the field of taking care of, of older persons as mandated by the Older Persons Act. So those are some of the strategies that the department was trying to embark on to ensure that uh, uh, this takes place. And I must correct something because it is said uh, for 10 years, uh, uh, people have been uh, paid salaries. That's not true. Only after the completion of the building and when it was anticipated that it would be occupied, that we had to then get a non-profit organization that will be running that uh, 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 um, old age home that we started to really uh, uh, get the stuff. But it's not that uh, it has been for 10 years that we have been paying amount for, 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 for staff salaries. So how much have you been, how, for how many years have you been paying staff salaries, Ms. Mplongo? Uh, if if I'm, I'm correct, it could have been since 2019 that that has been happening because that was when it started to gain momentum with an understanding that not so long we will be able to occupy the building. So how do you then explain um, the payment of staff salaries when there hasn't been a single patient at the facility? As I indicated that it was in anticipation that within 
a very short space of time, uh, those challenges that are there with regard to getting the necessary documentation. And you must also understand, uh, uh, as I indicated to you, Sakina, that the, 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 buildings, uh, uh, the building was actually implemented by Rand West Municipality. And remember, the, the right to occupy or the occupancy certificate will be given by them. So it was under that understanding that they would assist us to unnerve that. And by the way, as a department right now, because of these challenges that we are facing with regards to getting occupancy certificate from the very municipalities who have implemented some of the buildings, this is not the only one. We have also others in other areas. We are now seriously considering to go the legal route because we are saying uh, it is unfair on us as a department because the name that goes out there is the name of the Department of Social Development. Meanwhile, they build for us with a, that understanding that they will ensure that all the necessary documents that are required are provided. So it is really frustrating when at this moment they are unable to help us in that regard. And I really feel the pain of the community members, some who, who, who feel they could be getting a, a, a meaningful salaries by working at this facility, and also those who were supposed to be beneficiaries who are supposed to get assistance from this facility. It is really frustrating when year in, year out, you don't see that coming. But as a department, we are committing that we need to deal with this. That's why we feel we need perhaps to go the legal route, because maybe that's the language that these municipalities will understand in helping us out with this challenge. Mm. And, and, and all of that is understandable, Ms. Mthongo, but this building was launched in 2012. And then, as you indicated, you employed people in 2019. So from 2012 until 2019, in that seven-year period, the department had failed to actually get the occupancy certificate. So on what basis then do you go ahead and employ people when you have failed in seven years to obtain the occupancy certificate? As I categorically stated, it was really in anticipation that within a short space of time, the very municipality that has implemented or built this building, they were going to give us the necessary documents. So, no, but based on what, uh, Mr. Mthongo? Because... We are not the experts in that field. Uh, they were giving us the, the, the surety that they will address those challenges. But I, I, I really wouldn't tell you... Uh, we were at pains of getting, and I can even share with you some of the minutes of our uh, intergovernmental relations session where we meet with municipalities. We, we first meet as, at a technical level uh, as people who are working in administration without our political leaders. Then we also have a session with our political leaders where even our MECs would have emphasized the fact that it is really unfair for community members not to benefit from this building. So in essence, we've been failed gravely by the municipality by not giving us these documents. Hence, uh, th we now that, that seems strongly. to be correct, but you exacerbated that failure as a department by going on and incurring further expenses of employing people when you still did not have the necessary documentation to occupy the building. I'm saying to you, that was in anticipation of solving those problems within a short space of time. But, um, but you had no basis on which to, to base that, Ms. Mthongo, because for seven I'm, years you had failed to get an occupancy certificate. So when you say you had anticipated that uh, you would receive that documentation imminently, based on what? Because if that uh, uh, documentation was available, surely in that seven-year period that had elapsed since the um, uh, project was actually handed over, you would have gotten it. So on what did you base it? From the commitment of the municipality itself, uh, as I'm saying to you that this became an agenda item in those critical meetings, they were saying they are working on it, they will ensure that we get that. So we felt in order to be ready, let's get staff that will be trained uh, by those that are already within the field so that when the time comes to open the facility, it's all systems goes. Um, and as I indicated earlier on that, even as early as this year, 
I uh, also together with the team, we said, let's look where we are with this project. And uh, by the way, we do get a, a, a constant report, but we just felt that maybe now with the new administration in the municipalities, uh, maybe they would also unnerve the, 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 the challenge that is there and assist us uh, in getting these documents uh, as quickly as we should possibly get them. Uh, and it is uh, uh, unfortunate that uh, is beyond our control as a department. And, and as I indicated to you that we, we, we strongly feel that perhaps we need to go the legal route because uh, our, our hands are held tied by uh. something that uh, 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 we, do, we do not understand what is really happening because with other buildings, we do get those occupancy certificates without a challenge. Ms. Mthonga, how much has been spent on this facility to date? Um, I don't have those figures, but uh, I can be in a position to provide to SABC uh, 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 within the next uh, a few hours. I can ask the team to provide that information. It's not information that I have at my disposal right now. Uh, we'll appreciate that. But we that. can be able to, to send to you. We, we would appreciate uh, basically a, a total amount that's been spent uh, from the beginning up till today, uh, because we were told it was about 27 million uh, for the building to be completed. And then subsequent to that, uh, there has been money spent on this facility every year. So let me just highlight uh, one issue here. A kitchen that has never been used, that's currently being renovated to the tune of half a million rand. Are you aware of that? I am aware. Uh, I also indicated that uh, it is with regard to things that are being pointed to say, uh, for us to give the certificate, please uh, fix the following issues. And I think uh, there were structural defects, I must uh, uh, um, indicate, but some of them, uh, perhaps because of the, the state of the facility not being used, exacerbated the situation. So that's what we are working on to make sure that it gets to the state that will get it the necessary documents. And I'd appreciate in that um, document if there would be a breakdown of how much has been spent on the same renovations every single year. Are you aware that that is taking place as well, Ms. Mthongo? Uh, I'm, I'm aware about what was done in, since 2019 when uh, then the former MEC launched the, 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 the facility officially. So um, that I'm aware of, of, of those things that, because they kept on telling to us that there's a leak here, it needs to be fixed. There's a crack here, you know, all those things I'm aware of them. And I think that's what we will provide to you uh, for all the years that uh, it has been said, uh, there were various renovations that were being done in the facility. Has anyone from your department physically went to the building to inspect what all of these renovations are? Yes. The department, we do have a unit uh, that uh, uh, focuses on infrastructure and they, they go there uh, uh, to, to, to check on those, on those things. Yes. So coming to the employees, Ms. Mthongo, you had appointed at a, an administrator who is also the chairperson of another uh, facility close by. Nineteen employees were actually taken into service on the, in 2019. So, as you said, you had employed them with the anticipation that the facility would be up and running soon, but it isn't. So explain to us the payment of salaries for staff members who are not physically working at the place for which they are contracted. My understanding was that with the training that they were undergoing or uh, where uh, with the administrator she was supposed to also uh, utilize them in the area where she is so that uh, when the facility gets open then it's not um, that they are not uh, well conversant with what they are expected to do that was the understanding of the department when we signed that contract with the uh, administrator uh, not that they would just sit around and not do anything, but they will be utilized uh, within uh, uh, the services for, for, for older persons by the administrator. But how does that work? Because what does the employment contract state with those 19 employees? Who do they work for? Because if you are saying that they can now go and work for another entity, who's responsible for paying UIF, who's responsible for uh, all the other uh, payments that are deducted 
from these employees and also for all of their other benefits? Who's responsible for that? I must, I must indicate that uh, the non-profit organization that has contracted uh, the, the, the employees together with the administrator, they should have agreed on how to handle all those matters with the assistance of the department, of course. Exactly. Your department was supposed to have been very clear on this, uh, Ms. Mklongo, because if the department is paying, how is it then that employees of the department are actually working for an NGO but getting paid by the department? No, 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 no. It's not that. The department is not paying. The, the, the department is giving a full um, amount, which is a subsidy, for payment of uh, various uh, things within a, 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 a facility. So with this one, uh, part of the money is to pay the administrator to help us uh, to ensure that uh, uh, those employees that have been contracted are being trained and are being assisted to understand about the running of the facility. So they may not necessarily be getting the full amount of also taking a, 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 a care of buying food and all the other things because the facility is not yet running. So there will be a total budget for all that once the facility is opened. So what exactly are they doing at the NGO? Do these people work for the department? Do they work for the NGO? Who are they and what exactly are they doing, Ms. Mthongo? They are working for the NGO. The, the, the department is... is uh, offering the facility to the NGO to run the facility. So in view of the fact that, as I indicated, that it was not yet a, a, a functional, hence we took that route to say, let's get someone who would assist these people who would be expected to run this facility to understand the ins and outs of running a facility. Mm, that's not what has happened here, Ms. Mthongo, because we spoke to Ms. Buota yesterday. So according to Ms. Buota, these people were employed by the department, and she was asked to train them. And I asked her the question that I want to put to you as well today. How do you, as a department, ask a, an entity, an NGO, that is not a registered training facility to train people? Uh, I must say to you, uh, Sakina, that as far as I know, that was not the arrangement that she should um, train them in terms of them getting accreditation because we know that the facilities that are, or the, uh, the, the, the organizations that are supposed to do that, uh, for example, they should be accredited with the Health and Welfare CETA. Uh, here, my understanding that she's an administrator who has to help them with the running of the facility, not in terms of them acquiring uh, uh, certificates of being, uh, 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 for example, caregivers. Um, so, so I don't understand uh, 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 that aspect. I heard her saying that, but as far as I know, we got her to be an administrator in terms of running a nonprofit organization, in terms of looking at the issues around. And when she spoke, I also heard her talking about the fact that it was more paperwork, which is, is, is correct, because we wanted her to assist this organization with governance-related matters, ensuring that they've got a board to run the, 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 the NGO, number two, to make sure that the, the, the operational functioning of the NGO is up to scratch. So. Uh, it was never said she should train these people to become a, a, a certificated. So I, I, I will need to investigate that because I do not understand. And I did ask uh, the team. They were also surprised where does that come from because that was not an agreement. And with regard to even the provision of services, you appoint Ms. Buota as the administrator. And then Ms. Buota happens to be on the board. She's the board chairperson of the facility where these workers are being trained. Is that not a conflict of interest? Uh, I wouldn't say that because, like, I'm categorically stating to you that she was uh, requested to assist with the um, 
ensuring that she, she, she helps them to understand the ins and run and out of running a facility. So I'm not so sure when she, she, she just took it upon herself perhaps to say, let me train. But if that was expected, we have got numerous organizations in Gauteng that are accredited with the health and welfare CETA that can assist in that regard. Mm. But uh, what it does train, not do, uh, uh, it the, doesn't the, the, change the, the fact. In that regard. It doesn't change the fact that that facility has now benefited unduly from the um, services of staff members of another entity because the department continued to pay these people and yet they were working for an NGO. I need to clarify, Sakina, because I, I keep on hearing you that the department appointed. The department funded an NPO. That NPO would have hired the, 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 the staff to, to be able to help it to run. Uh, because the way it works is that they would have written a, 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 an application to the department with a business plan categorically stating how they are going to run the facility. But as I indicated to you, with the challenges that we realized that the facility is not opening, we then felt very strongly that we need to get an NPO that will be in a position to understand how the, 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 the facility should run. So it's not the department paying necessarily salaries, but we are funding an organization that will be running that facility. So I think I need to clarify that. Okay. And with regard to, to you saying, uh, they have benefited unduly. Um, I think I would have to look at our service level agreement that we have signed with the administrator to, to, to check whether it was part of the deliverable that she should train them in uh, with regard to aspects of caregiving uh, Please. when she's not accredited. I will check that because as far as I know, it was with regard to ensuring that they assist uh, this organization to be able to understand the running of an old age home. So we'll come back to all of these things that you will get back to us on. But let me just finally ask you, Musakeng Old Age Home, are you aware of an incident where staff members were summarily fired this week uh, because they actually highlighted the plight of some of the people living there where people had been bitten by rats at that facility? I'm not aware, but uh, what I will do is that I would also uh, uh, find out from uh, maybe with this uh, uh, Renfontein uh, being in the in the spotlight, uh, perhaps I, uh, uh, I would be in a position to also get the, the about the other uh, facility. But I know about Muslaking Old Age Home, but I haven't heard about the story of staff that were uh, fired because of them having blown a whistle about uh, the incident that has taken place there. So what sort of uh, protection will you offer for staff who are blowing the whistle on all these irregularities that are going on at these old age facilities? I want to believe, Sakina, that each non-profit organization has got its own policies with regard to uh, ensuring that uh, how staff are taken care of. But uh, I know that also some of them are registered uh, for uh, UIF or with the Department of Labor in terms of them having employed people there. So uh, uh, part of our uh, investigation would probably also look at that uh, if this was an unfairly uh, uh, um, a situation where uh, people are just uh, willy-nilly uh, being fired for having uh, uh, raised issues around uh, unfair treatment to beneficiaries. Because it is very critical that you also understand that older persons by their nature are vulnerable. So I don't think when people bring out issues about the fact that older persons are not uh, being taken care of, they should be uh, 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 then sacked from uh, 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 their work. Ms. Mflongo, we actually have uh, some of that on video, so uh, we'll happily share that with you. But for today, let's park it there, and then we'll take a look at those financials in terms of what we were talking about, salaries being paid, other issues and um, uh, uh, renovations being paid for at the Prototype 20 home, and what exactly is being paid for. So we'll await those financials from you, uh, those reports indicating what it is about. Thank you so much uh, for your time there, and and uh, that was uh, Ms. Mplongo from the Department of Social Development, uh, Tembeni Mplongo, and uh, Head of Department in Gauteng. And we'll follow up on the story, of course, at a later stage. Let's take a quick break here on Morning Live.